Hey, what's up guys? Footy Manager TV here, and this is episode 5 of my Southampton career mode. And now, we're starting to get some transfers done. As you saw, Tadanari Lee was gone. We got about $1.4 million for him. And that means we really need to get in another striker, and that's something I will look to do. And something with this episode, my recording got a bit wrecked on two games, so you'll just see the end results, and you'll see the proof of how it's a bit stuffed up. That's why I didn't show the whole match, not because I lost or something like that. As you saw, we had a Wigan Athletic match coming up very soon. That's a match I really want to get a result from. And here, Leandro Paredes, you know the guy, I was chasing him. 74 overall, attacking mid. He's got 4-star weak foot, 4-star skills. He's got great shot, great passing as well, really. Um, I know a lot of people tr say try and sign Adrian from Brazil, or Adrian, not sure how to pronounce it. Uh, but anyway, the thing is, in my opinion, he's better than him. Adrian, he doesn't have those high attributes. Plus, Paradis, he's got 80 stamina. And as you'll see in a second, as I go through the other attributes, he's got 83 long pass, 83 long shots, and 81 shot power. I'm pretty sure Adrian doesn't have those high 80 attributes. And as you can see, four-star skills as well, that will help also. So, I think he can be a super player for us. Um, being 74 overall, only 18... Hopefully, he can become in the high 80s. I think he has 86 potential as well. So, imagine how good his attributes are going to look when he's that good. And like I said, uh, with the a recording of a couple of the games against Wigan and the next one in the Carlin Cup, which I didn't do good, uh, the recording stuffed up, like I said, so I won't be able to show the match. I'll just show the result, unfortunately. was very disappointed. It was the first time that happened. I suppose eventually uh, one thing like that's going to happen, I suppose, one time out of so many matches. And as you can see here, we're signing this guy from uh, Barcelona, Cameroon striker. He's really pacey, you'll see. But look how it's kind of stuffing up right now. So I just skipped to the results. If you see the bottom of the screen, uh, it's kind of shaking, and the match was really bad like that as well. And same with Leicester City, <laughs> Leicester City 4-0 in the Carling Cup. That was very bad. Uh, but as you saw, uh, I would have actually shown that match. But look, uh, you can see how it's like um, shaking, stuttering like that. That's why I didn't show it. And I forfeited because that match was so bad. <laughs> but anyway, at least I can focus on the league now and the FA Cup. As you can see in managers' objectives, it doesn't say anything about Carling Cup. Uh, just the domestic cup, which is FA Cup. And also, Danny Butterfield, when everything is normal now, um, in the next recording I did, we're getting rid of him. He decreased straight away. Only 61. That's so bad. And here, with not much transfer budget, I tried to get some loans in. As you can see, we got a player sold to get that bit, um, a bit of extra cash. So I changed up the, bu um, the budget allocation. And I actually changed them all because I just wanted to get some loans. I didn't have so much money. And you know how Barcelona, they have a couple players on loan, like the Mont um, Montoya, I think his name is, and also uh, Jonathan Dos Santos. Those players will be really key for us. That's why I wanted to get them to the team as I was searching for players that are on loan. And you'll see it right here. As you see, transfer budget, it's not so much. So I really just wanted to get it all. As you see, Montoya there, look at those great attributes, his strengths right there. He's a perfect right back for me. I definitely want to get him to the team for a loan. Um, and I think he costs like about 20,000 per week wages, which really acceptable for a, in a team being in Barcelona. You would think he has good wages. So, But then Jonathan Dos Santos as well. I had him in my Newcastle career. Also Montoya as well. So very familiar with those players. Another reason why I wanted to get them. I know how they play. I know what their strengths is. I know how they play in game. So getting those two will be absolutely perfect for me. Getting a defender and another midfielder, they both will suit in the formation just fantastically. And I actually changed up the budget allocation. I'm not sure if I was going to try and get someone else. Uh, yeah, just to fit it in like that. Then I just advance, and hopefully I can sign them before the transfer deadline day ends. And they will be fantastic signings for us. Like I said, I play with them, and I know how they play in-game. And they'll be very good. As you can see, they both accept here. And basically, we have pretty much no money after that. So that's not good, but... Really, like I said, familiar players to me. I think they will blend with the squad very well. And hopefully they can make an impact for this season. Obviously, I probably won't sign them like I did my Newcastle career. Just use them for the first season. And hopefully they can put in good performances. And that's it for the transfer deadline day. Just, yeah, I didn't want to get anyone out. Or I didn't have the money to get anyone else. So I think I did well to use up all my budget. And I think now my squad is really... Uh, very strong. So starting from now, I know the couple last results were pretty bad, as you saw um, the final results. But I think with this squad now, I think I can start to get a few 
Uh, really good results. And if you see now, where are we in the league? Southampton, we're about 14th. I'll be looking to improve on that in my next games. As you see with the next match coming up, is actually against Manchester United. So this is a big match. We've got to show our quality and hopefully we can get a result. A draw will be great. Luke Shaw, uh, he wants a new contract. Has he been starting? And I really like Luke Shaw. I don't want him to leave. And you just got to see there's some action on him in the coming episode. Just go away and see for that. But some very interesting news. Um, what sort of his thoughts at the team and what his plans is sort of. So here's really the look at the team. I love this formation right now. You've got the four really in midfield, and then you've got the fullbacks attacking. It makes so much options to pass to, which I always love someone to pass to. As you can see, Montoya, 74 overall, and De Santos. They really suit in the team well. And as you can see, that Dongo Sa um, Safak, I don't know if you pronounce the T or not. I think I'll just call him Safak. And anyway, he's Cameroon. He's got pace. Oh, he's from Cameroon, sorry, and he's a striker. He could potentially be the next Samuel Eto'o. As you know, he used to play from Barcelona as well. So, yeah, like I said, he got pace, but he's also got a crazy amount of shot power as well. So, I'm not sure if I show him or not where you can see his attributes, but he doesn't make an impact straight away because, you know, he's got low attributes apart from his physical attributes. Uh, so, it's going to take him a while to improve, but hopefully uh, he can be a future striker for us. And we've got heaps and heaps of young players. Also, Luca Morone on loan from Juventus. If you're looking at that team, it seems really solid. That team is good enough to really escape relegation, in my opinion. So this is really going to be a tough run. we got Man United playing at home, at least. But then we've got Arsenal away. Two really tough games. We could lose twice here and then end up in the relegation zone. So i really got to be careful with how I play. But I really like how my team is developing. Look at that. Uh, Vagard Foren, he's a beast defender, at least for a Southampton level. Obviously, I can't have 80 over, high over 80, yeah, high over 80 overalls, or what I'm trying to say. Yeah, like 80, like 86, 87. I'm not going to have those defenders in my team. But Foren, and again, this is rubbish that you're going to see so much. I'm going to show like a lot of replays like in the instant replay because so much ridiculous stuff is happening and the worst team again to happen against Manchester United but look at that to look at it again I go even slower motion did I get the ball look I went in to get the ball and then he just collided with me what else can you do with that that is just ridiculous not acceptable and things like that make me want to stop playing the game and yeah, that's just ridiculous. Almost forfeiting again there, but that's why it, that's those are things that I just hate about the game, and it makes me like want to stop playing the game actually, and just play something else because it's not fun uh, when the game just does that against you, especially when playing a team of Manchester United's level. Uh, you gotta take every chance you get, and you need that kind of luck on your side, not their side. But here, a long through ball there to Lambert. He's just gonna get a chance here, and he just had a reaction shot there just the one his first reaction was just to strike it then he found the back of the net and that's why I'm not selling him at least in this season if he may be not fast and he may be decre he actually isn't decreasing as you see in a squad report he just took the shot there and just because of his superb finishing he gets that shot in and there nice cross by Nathaniel Klein and we actually took the lead here with a great header by Jay Rodriguez like I said he's amazing in the air he scored in the Man City match he scored a similar goal but the cross came from the opposite side that's just an amazing header to me he's the best striker I've played with that can win headers in the air and can jump that high but here 45th minute, extra time, you know they're the special time for Manchester United to get a goal, or any team to get a goal, just the CPU, look I tried to clear it, but of course go straight to them, perfect passing, and look at that, it just rebounds back to them, and they score a perfect finesse by Raphael on his opposite foot, Raphael who's a defender, so let's take a look at that again, they get the ball, we win the tackle once, or not the tackle, we just rebound, but then they just took it, and then Raphael finished on his left foot, you know he's a right-footed player, and he's a defender, and you know he hardly has good um, finishing, and that was like a perfect finesse shot, yeah, so anyway, Mayuka, we get a chance here, then Paradis, the new man, he scores on his debut off the bench, he's the exciting prospect for us, and hopefully going into the, like, the next season, following seasons, he can do special stuff for us to bring us into European competition. A very great finish. And actually to create that, he did a back heel. Then Mayuka found him with the lob through ball. Uh, so that was fantastic piece of play there to gain the lead. But now, 
I just want you to notice how the opposition turns into superpower and my team turns to basically crap at the end of the game or towards the end of the game in extra time or going towards extra time. Just see what happens here. We have the ball just looking for the pass. I tried to pass, but they didn't let me. I actually pressed pass, but they didn't actually let me pass, which is ridiculous. But here, Raphael, they're going backwards, and they're going to just do perfect. Look at the goalkeeper. Look, perfect pass by the goalkeeper there. Look at that pass. That's like shove you passing from a goalkeeper. But here, they're going to make a counterattack, but he, I really need to... But look at that. Great tackle by Ramirez. I try and clear it, pass back, but it always goes back to them every single time. And when I get the ball back is finally when the game is over. So I just wanted to hold it on to make sure that we get the win. And it's 3-2. I cannot believe this right now. We're going to win against Manchester United. Just wanted to clear it there. And yeah, that was very... I'm not sure how we won this match with all that funny stuff happening against us. But that shows you can beat it. If you just focus on the match, don't get angry at the game. Just try and play. And that's what I did in this match. Very impressed. As you can see, only restricted. We had like the same amount of shots. So, But to have the same amount of shots against Manchester United, that's just a fantastic performance. So that was a great result. But next up, in the next episode, there's going to be Arsenal playing away. The team that's first. Arsenal, they're actually really good in the game. Morgan Schneiderlin, he thought of, had the thought in his head for whatever reason that I didn't want him at the team. But now he seems comf um, comfortable, yeah. So now Southampton, we're ninth. After one win, we leapfrog from 14th to 9th to a mid-table position. So really happy with that. So leave your thoughts on this great result. I was so happy after all the bullshit that happened in that match. Sorry, I don't usually swear, but that match was the most stupid match I ever, yeah, I ever played. Yeah, it was just ridiculous. Um, and I really didn't enjoy that even though I won the match, just the way it played was unenjoyable. But thanks for watching. Leave a like and all that kind of stuff, like comments. And I'll see you guys next time for more episodes in this series.